What is going on, Disney fans? My name is John Solo, and today I've got another story that might just ruin your childhood. I am, of course, talking about the original fairy tale that inspired the Disney classic, Sleeping Beauty. In the past, we've talked about stories written by the Brothers Grimm, but here's the thing. The Grimm Brothers version of Sleeping Beauty? Not that bad. So I had to go even farther back in my research to a little story called Sun, Moon, and Talia. And I must say, if you're looking for a messed up fairy tale, you're in the right place. Before we dive into that, I'll give you a quick summary of Disney's Sleeping Beauty so it's fresh in your head. Just sit back, relax, hit that like button, and enjoy. In Sleeping Beauty, an evil fairy who's upset she didn't get an invite to a baby shower puts a curse on the newborn Princess Aurora so that when she turns 16, she'll prick her finger on a spinning wheel and die. Another fairy uses her magic to soften the curse so that instead of dying, the princess will fall into a deep sleep that can only be woken with true love's kiss. The king then orders for all the spinning wheels in the kingdom to be burned, and the fairies take Aurora to a cottage in the forest to protect her. Fast forward 16 years, and Aurora, renamed Bride Rose is still living with the fairies in the forest, totally unaware of her royal status. She happens to run into the prince while dancing with woodland creatures, and the two fall for each other instantly. Shortly after, the fairies inform Briar Rose of her royal heritage and bring her to her family's castle where they make the mistake of leaving her unattended. She's tricked into pricking herself on a spinning wheel by the evil fairy Maleficent, and the curse of the deep sleep falls over her instantly. Prince Philip then discovers the fate of Princess Aurora and vows to save her. The good fairies help him kill Maleficent, rescue the princess, and live happily ever after. Now wasn't that story nice? Do you really want to ruin it by listening to another story about rape and cannibalism? You do? All right, let's get into it then. Just a heads up, I normally like to include pictures from the original story to show as I'm explaining it, but this time around I couldn't find that many, so I'm doing some of the illustrations myself. I am not claiming to be an artist. Each one is uniquely terrible in its own way. I just wanted to give you guys a heads up so you knew where these seemingly random doodles were coming from. So this story starts off with the birth of a princess named Talia. Instead of a curse being placed on her like in Sleeping Beauty, several wise men predict her future and say that she'll be put in great danger by a splinter of flax. Naturally, the king orders for all flax and anything similar to it to be taken out of the kingdom. Years go by, and one day, after Talia's grown into an adult, she spots an old woman spinning flax on a spindle outside the castle walls. She finds herself curious about the spindle because she's gone her entire life without seeing one. When she calls the old woman into the castle so she can get a better look at the instrument, a splinter of flax slides under her fingernail and she passes out instantly. Honestly, I'd probably do the same if I got a splinter under my fingernail. Once the king discovers her unconscious body, he pulls a Lord Denethor and assumes she's dead, and then turns the house that she died in into her tomb. He abandons the house never to go near it again because he's so struck with grief. But sometime later, a king from a nearby kingdom discovers her house while hunting. He breaks into explore, discovers Talia still unconscious, and does his best to wake her. Here's where things get weird. He doesn't think she's dead, but he also gives up on trying to wake her up. Still, he finds himself so entranced by her beauty, he makes love to her while she's asleep. He rapes her and then leaves to go back to his kingdom. But get this. The king doesn't know, but he just got Talia pregnant with a set of twins. Nine months go by and she gives birth to the babies while still unconscious. Lucky for her, some fairies, like the ones in the movie, help her out with the birthing process and then place the baby so they can breastfeed. Somehow, one of the twins starts sucking on Talia's finger by mistake and the splinter that was under her fingernail comes right out and she wakes up. That is how she wakes up. A little less romantic than true love's kiss, right? Even so, Talia is grateful to the babies for saving her life and decides that she'll take care of them, totally unaware they're her own kids. I wonder what that was like for her. One second, she's trying a spindle for the first time ever, and the next second, she's breastfeeding two babies she doesn't even know are hers. And believe it or not, the story just gets more ridiculous from here. Some more time goes by, and Talia is raising the kids in her house with the help of the same fairies from earlier who bring them food and other things they need. Eventually, Eventually, the king who got Talia pregnant remembers her and visits the house once again to check on her. Imagine his surprise when he got there and she was not only conscious, but holding twin babies. Believe it or not, he's overjoyed by the discovery and he tells Talia how she got pregnant and how the babies are also his. He stays in the house with them for a few days and the four of them grow closer and closer, but eventually he has to leave to go back to his kingdom so he can rule. Here's the problem. The king is so infatuated by Talia and the twins, he keeps repeating their names to himself over and over again. Sun, Moon, and Talia. Also, he's married. As you might expect, after a certain point, his wife is like, what's this guy 
going on about with Sun, Moon, and Talia. And then she threatens the king's secretary so that he tells her about the other family. Of course, she's infuriated at the news, so she tells the secretary to write a letter to Talia posing as the king and say that he misses the children. And then when Talia sends the kids to the kingdom, the queen tells the cook to kill the children and make them into the king's dinner. You felt bad for the queen at first, didn't you? Little did you know, she's a total psycho. Lucky for the kids, the cook was not psychotic. He gave the children to his wife to keep safe and killed two newborn lambs instead. That night, the whole time the king is eating his dinner, the queen keeps saying weird, creepy stuff to him, alluding to the fact that he's eating his children. But since he would never guess that is what she's hinting at, he just gets annoyed from the stuff she's saying and decides to stay at a villa for a couple days. The queen is happy, but not satisfied with her evil plan just yet. So she has the secretary write another letter to Talia, calling her to the kingdom, and when she shows up, the queen tells her she's going to burn her at the stake. Actually, what she says is, are you the whore who has been enjoying my husband? Get ready to be welcomed in hell, because soon you'll be going there. But you know, Tomato, tomato. Talia can see there's no way she's gonna convince the queen to let her live, so she tries an alternate plan. She asks if she can undress before being burnt alive so her fine clothes don't get ruined. The queen ends up agreeing to this, not out of mercy, but solely because she wants Talia's dress. But Talia, the smart thinker she is, undresses really slowly and cries as loud as she can throughout the whole process. The king, who is on his way back from the villa, hears her cries and rushes into the castle to see what's going on, and he finds her almost completely naked staring face to face with his wife. He demands an explanation and the queen says, not only am I gonna burn your mistress alive, I fed you your own children for dinner. How you like them apples? That one's not a direct quote, I'm paraphrasing that. Disgusted and furious, the king pulls Talia to the side and then orders for the queen, his secretary, and the cook all be burnt at the stake. The queen and secretary both received their punishments, but when it was the cook's turn to burn, he confessed the truth to the king, that he saved his children and only fed him lamb. After the king was reunited with his kids, he rewarded the cook with great riches and lived happily ever after with Sun, Moon, and Talia. So that was the original story of Sleeping Beauty. I hope you liked it. I'll admit, when I was a little kid, I was not a fan of Sleeping Beauty. I found it kind of boring, but also Maleficent terrified me. <laughs> So this ended up being kind of therapeutic in a way. Didn't expect that. If you like this video and want to see more just like it, make sure you hit that like button down below and hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on so you don't miss any content. Hit that share button down below to easily share this video with your friends and family on social media. And when you're through with that, follow me on social media. Handles are right in front of you and links are in the description. Thank you all so much for watching. In case you forgot, my name is John Solo and I'll see you next time. Thank you.